This is the tutorial video for the Gamalux flange kit. Here we have a nice, hard, sturdy case. Hinge, good for, uh, good for shipping. If you have to put this on a plane, uh, the products inside won't get all, uh, all damaged uh, by the baggage handler. Uh, make sure that the logo is facing up and turn the buckles, opening the case. Uh, on the inside, there will be a diagram showing how to reassemble the case or in which, uh, in which position each of the components should go. Inside the case, you have three fixture housings and a set of sealing flanges that I will demonstrate. Uh, the first fixture housing is uh, recessed, three inch wide, five inch tall. Uh, later versions will have a four inch tall fixture but the functions will be the same. Uh, on the side of the fixture, you will have a diagram of, of how that fixture would normally be installed into a ceiling. In this case, this is a recessed product uh, that is intended to go up into the ceiling or into a wall. Uh, we have a half inch flange going around all four sides and uh, you will see on the side of the fixture that is called out as the GFR trim, which is GIP flanged rod mounted. Uh, in a wall, we would provide uh, brackets that will be inserted into the wall first, and then the fixture will be attached uh, into those brackets. So this flange goes around all four sides of our fixture. If we are going into a continuous run, only the beginning and end fixtures will have flanges at the ends, uh, and the fixtures that are in the middle of the run will not have flanges. Uh, each fixture, of course, is called out for a specific location in that particular pattern. Uh, and, and we will uh, mark each of the fixtures with that location identifier, which corresponds also with the location identifier that's shown on our layout drawing that we provide to the installing contractor. So uh, very sturdy uh, piece, of, uh, piece of, uh, uh, of equipment here. Um, you can also demonstrate the quality of our finish. We use a two component polyurethane uh, paint. Uh, it's very, very, uh, very sturdy paint. Uh, Porsche has used this paint. Boeing has used this paint. So it's a it's a good formulation of paint for us. Um, we do all of our painting in house. We don't uh, we don't do it, do any painting uh, outside of the Gamalux facility. Uh, all right. So that is the GFR trim. The next housing to show you is uh, the uh, a recessed housing, which has no trim on the sides. Uh, instead, we've got a couple brackets on the side of the fixture, and these two brackets will be used to uh, attach the fixture uh, into a grid ceiling. Uh, we will provide the necessary spacers between the bracket and the fixture housing to set that bracket off at the appropriate distance away from the side of our fixture, depending on what type of grid is being used on the, uh, 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 at the job site. In addition to that housing, that recessed grid mount housing, you'll have a set of flanges uh, that are available to you. And each of these flanges uh, shows the different ways in which we can mount this fixture into a, uh, uh, let's talk about a grid ceiling first. So uh, if you'll take the sheet metal components out of the, uh, um, out of the plastic bag, you'll notice that there are three different types of trims. The first one we'll discuss is the T1W. T1W, I don't know if you can see that in the camera there. The T1W stands for T-grid mounted, one inch grid, W being wire suspended. So this, this uh, uh, particular trim is specifically uh, you are designed for use in a, um, uh, in a one inch grid or a 15 16 inch grid. I'm not going to undo the side brackets for now, uh, just so that I can slide these, these pieces in and out uh, easily and quickly for you. Now, once that grid piece, or uh, once that trim piece is installed onto the side of the fixture, you notice that it is actually rested above the bottom of the fixture by about a sixteenth of an inch. You can kind of see it here where my finger is uh, setting up inside. The reason why we set that flange back about a sixteenth of an inch is because the grid material itself is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So we want the bottom of the sick fixture to sit flush with the bottom of the grid. Most manufacturers don't do that. 
Instead, the bottom of their fixture actually rests on top of the grid. And what that's going to do, it raises the fixture up just slightly, and it'll end up illuminating the side of that grid material. And that's not what the designer had intended when they selected a grid-mounted fixture. I'm sure of that. So we set our flange back about a sixteenth of an inch uh, above, the, uh, above the bottom of the fixture. And that flange is uh, the appropriate width to be used in a 15 16 or one inch uh, uh, grid setup. Now, these are tight, so you kind of have to you have to give them a good uh, a, a good push and a good tug to get them out. The next trim to talk about is the T9W, and again, that's shown on the side of your uh, of the flange. The T9W, when you put that into the fixture, you, again, you notice that it is set back about a sixteenth of an inch from the bottom of the fixture, but you might be able to tell that it's a little bit more narrow than the T1W uh, flange. The reason for that is because the 9 sixteenths inch grid is more narrow than a 15 sixteenths inch grid. So we want to size the width of that flange accordingly so that the fixture isn't rattling side to side in the grid. We always want the fixture to sit nice and flush uh, uh, and, and, and firmly embedded into that grid system. So we use a different trim assembly on the 9 sixteenths flat grid than we would on a 15 sixteenths flat grid. The next uh, grid trim assembly to talk about is the TSW. TSW. Now when this is up into the uh, uh, installed up into the, the side slot of the fixture, give it a good, uh, a good push and you'll get it all the way up to where that, that trim is actually about a quarter inch above the bottom of the fixture. Now this is very important because the slot grid or Don Fine Line type grid or slot grid is a, a quarter inch tall. So we want the flange to rest on top of that quarter inch tall grid, al again allowing the bottom of the fixture to sit flush with the bottom of the grid. Again, most manufacturers don't do this. They will have a fixture with a one size fits all grid flange where the fixture will sit up above uh, or on top of that slot grid. What that means is when the fixture is illuminated, it will be illuminating the sides of that slot grid. And again, there is no way that the de designer originally intended that. We know that they did not want to uh, illuminate the sides of the grid just in that one location where the, where the fixture is installed. Uh, most of the time, they want that fixture to sit flush with the bottom of that slot grid. And so that's why we do provide this, uh, 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 this trim on the side of a fixture that's mounted into a slot grid. This same trim, by the way, would also be used if you're doing a, if you're being, uh, uh, if you're installing the fixtures in a flat grid with tegular tiles. Tegular tiles usually drop down from the, from the bottom of the grid by about a quarter of an inch, revealing the tile below the grid. So uh, we offer the option to have the bottom of the fixture also sit down a quarter inch below the grid so the bottom of the fixture is flush with the bottom of the tiles. Again, eliminating the possibility of illuminating the sides of the tiles, which just looks weird. So uh, when we get an order for grid-mounted fixtures, we don't just have a one-size-fits-all approach. We ask a lot of questions. We're going to ask what type of grid is being used, and if we find out that there are tegular tiles being used, we'll ask, do you want the fixture to sit flush with the tegular tiles, or do you want them to sit higher where it's flush with the bottom of the grid? So we do ask a lot of questions, but it's because the designer wants their product to, to the, that installation to look like they originally intended it. So uh, uh, we found that that works very well for us, uh, and it's going to help you and your reputation as well as you're representing Gamalux. Okay, so now we're going to move away from grid mounting uh, apparatus and go over to uh, flange. I already showed you the the uh, 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 the fixture that was uh, that was uh, for flange mount in drywall, and just want to show you. Uh, the, the grid that, or, or I'm sorry, the uh, trim that is installed onto the side of the fixture to make that flange around four sides of the fixture. I'm only installing one. Uh, now if you're showing the fixture upside down, then that, that flange is going to drop um, uh, past the bottom of the fixture. You don't want that. So just make sure that you're showing it right side up uh, so, that, uh, so that the bottom of the flange is flush with the bottom of the fixture housing. So that is the flange, the GFR removable trim. 
the next removable trim we have is also called GFR, but that trim is actually a little bit more narrow. When you put that onto the side of the fixture, you notice that it provides about a 5 16 flange. We would call that a mini flange. Uh, be very careful about specifying a mini flange because you'll have to ensure that the installing contractor, specifically the drywaller, is cutting an absolutely laser straight cut in the slot in the wall or in the ceiling where that fixture is going to be uh, set up into that slot. If that, uh, if that cut is too rough to be covered up by just a, a 5 16 flange, uh, and actually on the back side of it, it's only three, uh, uh, so maybe a quarter inch uh, uh, of clearance from the side of that, uh, of that housing. So the, the, the drywaller has to be very precise in their cut in the drywall if you're going to use a mini flange like this. And then the last piece to show you is our GMR trim, and that is for the mud-in detail on the, on the bottom of uh, any of these G-beam recessed fixtures. Now, to talk more about the mud-in detail, I'm going to use uh, the, other, uh, the other fixture housing that is provided to you. <clears throat> this is our flangeless fixture. This is actually has two flanges on it, which you would think is, is pretty strange on a flangeless fixture. But this is a very important part of what makes Gamalux unique uh, and a very special uh, 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 type of product to be used in a, in a flangeless uh, installation. See, this fixture is going to be embedded into the wall or up into the ceiling in the studs before the drywall goes in. Now, once the drywall, or, uh, once the fixture is installed, the drywall is going to be then embedded around all four sides of this fixture between the back flange and the front flange. Once that is done, the drywaller will then uh, uh, screw the uh, that that drywall through the backing flange. So, right in here, 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 okay, all the way around. That's going to make this backing flange a permanent part of the surrounding drywall, and that's very important. Now, once that's been done, uh, you'll notice that we have the, uh, the mud ribs going around all four sides, and those mud ribs are there going to receive the, uh, uh, a, a, a length of fiberglass tape that will go onto the unfinished wall all the way up on four sides, and then the plaster guy is going to come in and plaster over and, uh, and smooth that out, and then the, fixture, the, the wall will be tex textured. Uh, and finished per whatever the arch architectural instructions are. Now, we're not concerned about this plastic piece here. We're not concerned about that getting all, uh, all muddy and, 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 and painted uh, um, during the installation process because after the paint is dry, what they'll need to do is go back up against this plastic piece and score along the edge of it, scoring along the outside edge of it all the way around and then remove that plastic piece. Very important. Once that plastic piece is removed, it'll reveal this little gap right here. It's called an expansion gap. This expansion gap is very important because as the lamps in the housing heat up, they're going to cause the housing itself to heat up. And once that housing heats up, what's it going to do? It will expand, right? Now, if we did not have an expansion gap around all four sides of our fixture, and if the housing expands directly up against the plaster that's surrounding the fixture, what's going to happen to the plaster? It will crack a little bit every day. So as the housing heats up and cools down every day when the lamps are on, lamps are off, those subtle differences uh, uh, and, and fluctuations are going to cause the surrounding plaster to crack. And that's what you see on everybody else's product. To my knowledge, we're the only manufacturer making a, a, a mud flange or a mud detail uh, in this fashion. Basically, what we've done is we've created an exterior housing with an interior housing floating inside. So as the interior housing heats up and cools down, all that heating and cooling, expansion and contraction, happens within the span of that expansion gap. This eliminates the pressure on the surrounding plaster. So with everybody else's product, what's going to happen is that product's going to look great on installation day. And, uh, uh, or, or, or on grand opening day of the new library downtown and the mayor's there and you're there and the architect and the contractor and everybody's patting each other on the back saying, hey, we, did, we all did a great job 
uh, let's go let's go have some wine and cheese and congratulate each other, right? So then maybe a week, month, a couple months later, your uh, your nieces and nephews come in from out of town. You got some relatives come in and say, hey, let's go take a take a look at the uh, the new library. We did some really neat fixtures in the wall. Let's go take a look and and, and look at the beautiful design. Now of course. Uh, because they're not lighting professionals, they're just looking at the grand scope of the place and they're thinking it's very wonderful. But what you're doing is you're looking up close at the installation of those fixtures and you're going to find, if you use somebody else's product, you're going to find those cracks around the edges. But by then it's too late to do anything about it. It's been four months, six months, a year. You're not going to call the drywaller back. You're not going to call a painter back and have them come and fix these problems because it'll just persist. So you live and learn, right? Well, with Ganalux product, your installation is going to look good. Uh, for the duration of that of that installation because we've eliminated the pressure on the surrounding plaster with an engineered component that comes from the factory with that uh, um, with the with that characteristic built in we're not asking the installing uh, contractor to be a magician we've provided the components which will allow these installations to look good for the duration of that installation okay and the last thing that is in your uh, that is in your sample case is a little uh, um, bracket which can slide along the top of any one of these recessed fixtures. And this is just to show that we can put the mounting apparatus pretty much anywhere we like or anywhere the installing contractor likes along the top side of those fixtures. We're not locked into any particular location to, uh, to provide the, uh, uh, the wire or the rod mount uh, bracket. And that is the case on all of these recessed fixtures. We have that slot and that's basically a standard uh, within primarily all, all, almost all of the G-beam fixtures. I believe only GB66 does not have it. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, after you're done showing this, uh, this, this sample case, it's very simple to put back together. Slide the, uh, slide the bracket into its little shroud. Take your GMR fixture. Make sure you put that plastic barrier back into place so you don't lose it. Oh, by the way, on that GMR, you notice this little this little piece right here. Uh, this is a bracket that we install at the factory uh, probably about every two feet uh, at, at, when we when we ship the fixtures. And what this does is it keeps the drywaller from compressing the sides of the fixture when they're installing the drywall around all four sides. On a little one foot fixture like this, it's no big deal. But if we're dealing with the 16 foot housing, all one piece, it's very important. That we uh, that we provide brackets uh, um, to hold that 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 uh, fixture aperture at a consistent width all the way down, so that when the lenses are snapped in, they're not falling out. Or if that that housing had been compressed, the lenses wouldn't snap in at all. So that's what this bracket is for. Certainly after installation, then the bracket is removed. Okay. So just make sure that your bracket has been reinstalled into the fixture, and then. Reinstall your plastic barrier. Set that fixture back into its original spot. Like so. Now your flanged fixture will be set right in front of that. Like so. Then your uh, grid mount fixture. When you install that back into the case, have the uh, uh, have these bolts facing outward or towards the side of the case. Uh, this will keep those bolts from scratching any of the other components inside the fixture. Okay, so the bolts are facing out. Then the uh, the the uh, suspension bracket can just be slid into any one of the little slots there. Um, I recommend that you have it have the uh, have the bracket, the exposed part of, the, of this, uh, this little shroud, have it facing up or towards the handle so that when you're carrying the case, this, uh, this bracket doesn't fall down into the, uh, into the rest of the case and scratch, scratch the other components. Then take all the rest of your uh, trim pieces, put them into some of the bags. It doesn't matter which bag you use. You just want to separate them a little bit to keep them from scratching each other. How's the weather over there? Okay. Now, because the flange or, or the mud flange is an odd shape, 
it's going to, uh, uh, when you wrap all of this up into the foam wrapper, and then you wrap it up with the rubber band, one side is going to be a bit thicker than the other. So for that thick side, put that thick side on the hinge side of the, uh, of the, uh, of the case. The reason being that the, uh, uh, the GMR housing slopes downward towards the hinge. So you want to put that thicker part on the downward slope. Uh, basically allowing the top of this to be to be flush. If you had gone the other way around with the tall side facing you, then now it's a little too tall for the case to close. So be very careful about that. Okay, want everything nice to be uh, to be nice and flush. <coughs> close the case. If you have any difficulty getting the getting the case closed, try to push the housings towards the center a bit. Get them away from the walls uh, if you can and then you're, you'll be able to close very nicely. Turn your buckles. And you're done.